All right. Welcome, everybody, to another Facebook Live with us on the Yasutomo page. Um, today, we're going to be sharing some really cool techniques with different kinds of mediums on Yasutomo mineral paper. There are just a few examples of this on the screen that Karen's displaying so beautifully. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so many of you might already know what mineral paper is, but some of you might not have heard of it before. So I'll just share a little bit. Mineral paper is made of 80% calcium carbonate. So unlike regular paper, it doesn't have any wood. It's a tree-free paper, um, and it has really unique properties that we'll try and show you um, on our live stream demo today. But it's a really amazing substrate that more and more people are getting to hear about and are falling in love with. And it creates really cool and exciting and kind of unexpected results sometimes, depending on what you're doing, um, that is just really fun and different than anything else you'll find. Um, Karen's going to be using some other materials to create beautiful pieces of art, similar to what you're seeing on the screen today right now. Um, here's one of them. She's going to be using our new Niji watercolor pencil. It's a 36 color set, so you get so many with them. Um, she'll also be using watercolors, gouache, our blender crayon. So there's a number of new items that we're so excited to show off to you guys and We've seen them before in some of our other demos, but we just love them so much. We're going to keep using them so you get more and more inspired. We're also going to have a giveaway, as we do during our live stream videos on Facebook. Um, to enter the giveaway, you do have to be in the US or Canada to win. I'm so sorry to our international viewers, um, but we'll let everybody know as soon as we are able to start shipping overseas. Um, but for our viewers watching from the US and Canada, all you have to do to enter is write your first name, last name initial in the comments, and tell us where you're watching from. Um, for example, for me, I would write Phoebe L um, from Torrance, California, or you could even just share your state um, if you wouldn't like to give a more specific city or town. I'll also put the instructions in the comments and pin it so that you could um, refer back to the instructions for how to enter the giveaway. And at the end of the demo, I will call a name at random and we'll announce the winner. And if your name is called and you are a winner, please just write a little comment saying that you're here and I'll follow up with you on how to get you your prize. Um, with all that out of the way, I would love to turn it over to Karen, who will start getting to the artwork. Thank you oh, all. You're Awesome. Thank you, Phoebe. I'm so glad you're home here. And um, I'm going to talk about mineral paper because mineral, mineral mineral paper is just a basic, amazing substrate like what Phoebe mentioned. Um, this new pad, we've had mineral paper for a long time, but this one is an, it's an 11 by 14. And the, the, the weight is like, well, it's 160 pounds. So it's heavier it feels um, it's just heavier and it's got a lot more body than the original. I think I might have, here's some thinner. Okay, so here's, this is on our normal uh, paper. It's thin, but it's still gorgeous. And what I like about the original, I, I would never want to have, I want to have both because the regular weight, which is the KM, oh boy, Phoebe, you will have to tell me, but we have a, uh, we have a six by eight size pad, Eight and a half yep. by 11 and nine, yep. nine by 12. Oh boy, can you tell us the sizes again? I'm so sorry. Yeah, no, no, good, good always to check. So we have um, three sizes of the, of the former, um, well, I guess not former, we still have it, but we have three sizes of the original mineral paper. It's a six by eight, a nine by 12 and an 11 by 14. And there 11 by 14 is also the size of this new paper pad that we're playing with today. Thank you so much. I just had a brain freeze. Yeah. Um, but the the paper in its lighter weight has some really great features about it. Um, I don't have a sheet that's not decorated, but it's translucent enough. If you wanted to trace something, you can. I mean, it's that's not it's not like a tracing paper, but if you put some light behind it, you can trace behind it. It also the original weight is really good for rubbings. Like if you wanted to pick up a texture on a rubbing plate or on a on outside uh, any you know any place you want texture like if I wanted to even take I've got this uh, this sort of cementy thing here and if I wanted to create a texture 
I can just rub the paper over it with some, like a crayon or something, and I can get a texture. So I just wanted to tell you that you, you know, you've got options with the weights. So, but today I'm going to work on the newest because of the, it's the newest and it is, um, I love it. Now being large like this, I, a lot of people know me that I've been working very small for many couple, you know, quite a few years now and 11 by 14, maybe a little bit big for a lot of people, but you know, the good news is you can, you can make it smaller. And I want to show you how without having to, you, you don't even need a fancy paper cut. So it comes off in this nice, you know, very nice, bright white. It's also one of the little thing that I, I do is I like to use it for my uh, flat lay photography, just as another little tip. Let's say you have something, I'm gonna move all this out of the way because I'm gonna get started on doing some fun stuff. But let's say there's no glare to it. There's no shine at all. It's like the most pure, pristine, non-glare. So let's say you wanna put a, something on top, an item, whatever, you're going to get this incredible white surface. So just a little tip, if you wanted a sheet of this just to do a small item or some artwork you want to photograph, your, your edges are going to be nice and light and white. So just kind of a, just a little tip because I found, I use this a lot. It's one of my little secrets. I'll put something I've made right on it and it just makes the background disappear. So going forward, I'm just, I'm creating on it now. Um, the paper, or the it's really not uh, paper, of course, as Phoebe mentioned, it's made out of calcium carbonate and a little bit of recycled plastic to hold it together. Now, normally, if you were to try to tear this, or it's very tear resistant, so it's kind of hard to tear. If you, you know, it feels kind of, I think you could pull it a little bit and stretch it, it looks like I just did. Um, but what is nice is if you want to get smaller sheets and you're just kind of intimidated by the size, you could measure these and I just use a straight edge and I'm just going to kind of eyeball it here but I kind of start the I start a little tear I just kind of take that and I make a tiny little tear at the top and then I'm just going to tear it right off and I get this gorgeous soft edge and I really love that so I can go ahead I'm going to do this make a couple of little smaller shapes and this is really more my size because lately that's just how I've been creating so I need to start the tear first and then cut, otherwise it just doesn't want to tear. So I'm going to break it down one more time. And now I have some, I have four sheets to do some fun projects on today. But that's just a nice way, and it's also makes things more economical because now you've got four sheets out of the one. So, and they have these nice soft edges. You can do, you can make, put this, uh, make this big enough for a greeting card. It's not the same as a piece of 140 pound watercolor paper let's say, because it has some kind of pliability to it. So, but I can crease it very nicely. I get this really nice crease. So you can you can make a greeting card and you can make it kind of like, uh, like if you're doing a pool party or something where there's water, this is water. It doesn't, uh, it's not affected by water. It's not gonna wrinkle. So it's kind of nice for, so maybe, uh, there's probably some applications I'm, I can't think of right now, but I think because it is water, resistant and it won't come apart in the rain. I mean, there's books that are made or journals made um, for that, for outdoor drawing. And I wanted to share with you the best, I mean, thing about this, of course, is just drawing on it, just to, as a surface to draw on. Um, this could be actually made into a little journal, I'm thinking, because I could fold all the pages and I could make a little journal and, I, and it is beautiful the way it accepts um, pencil. You can see now with this weight, my pencil is not digging into the, uh, it's not creating a dent on the other side. So it's really gorgeous for, for um, pencil work. And that's just one thing you can do other, there's other things, but I'm just gonna st start from the basics. Pencil is a great, um, great medium to work with. Now this is our newest one point, and I don't know if they're here yet, <laughs> But I'm teasing you if you, if, if you, if it's, I know it's on its way. Um, yeah, they're here. They're here. <laughs> oh, they're they're here. Okay. I'm, I'm terrible. Yeah. I need to, thank you. I need to catch up on the, what's in the warehouse. Um, but this, this is a, an artist pencil that, you know, yes, someone now has. And I like it because this is a much heavier than the, um, you know, regular pencil. It's a lot more, it has a lot more oomph to it, even though it's a 2B, I believe. Oh, 
may be wrong, HB, 2B, but anyway, the what I love about it is HB. I, HB, thank you, which is kind of similar to 2B. I think it's softer though, but I really love the way this colors, this goes down. Now, that's, a, that's just the pencil on there. Now, of course, you can smudge, you can do all kinds of fun blending on it. And then I'm going to bring these out because I showed you a minute ago when she was showing you. Um, so let's say you want to just take some mineral paper, cut it up in small pieces, and then you can get some your pencils, some watercolor pencils, and a water brush if you wanted to, you know, make it real portable and be weatherproof. You, you know, it might be raining, so you no know, worries. You're going to just go and paint anyway. You've got this wonderful paper that does that doesn't have doesn't hurt to go in the rain. Now it takes this pencil really nice. It's soft, very soft. I'm feeling the tooth of it. It's kind of a like a. It's not a hot press. It doesn't feel like a hot press. It feels just like a nice, just has a nice surface. Maybe a Bristol, kind of like Bristol board. And I'm just going to put some watercolor pencils with just without any uh, water at this, just right now. I'm just going to put a few colors down. And really simple. This would be great for young, you know, for kids, grandkids. Be great for, I think it'd be great for schools, actually, come to think of it. Because you're really, you're really having, you've got multimedia that you can do. You can draw dry media and wet media and layering. The only, the only um, media that I don't recommend and just doesn't, it looks great, but it doesn't hold up is um, um, oil, anything with oil in it. For some reason, uh, the oil tends to dissolve, does something which kind of creates a buckling of the paper. Now that could be a desired thing, but I just keep away from the oil pastels and only use water soluble uh, products. And then it, it all just works really well together. So I'm just doing this little poppy kind of thing and I'm just doing it dry. So these watercolor pencils, they're called watercolor pencils, but they can be used without the water if you wish. But I'm just gonna just show you when you add the water, what happens, it's so pretty. And it's just so- By the way, Karen, um, yeah. Lori, Lori Trumpet Art. Lori um, yeah. was asking about the texture of the mineral paper. So I wrote in the comments, it kind of has an eggshell texture, but if you have anything to share about it, I think people would really appreciate it, especially sure. if you haven't felt mineral paper. Sure, right. So no, it, it feels, um, it, as far as eggshells, I know eggshells are much rougher. I mean, eggshells are come, kind of remind me of this, you know, a little bit more rough. In fact, I just used the eggs, eggs this morning. So I, this is more like, okay, to compare it to something else that you may already have, I would say it's like a Bristol a plate finish, I mean, not plate finish, sorry, vellum finish. Um, the plate finish is more kind of a gloss to it. If you turn this on its side, there's absolutely no reflection, no glare, nothing to show that it's, that it's, uh, that it's shiny, you know, so it's not that smooth, but it is very smooth to my hand. I'm touching it and I don't feel any, any texture. Uh, really? So I'd say it's more like a vellum finish Bristol. I hope that helps because that's kind of, it's, it's just a very smooth finish. So I'm going to grab, I'm going to try to get this brush, get some water out of it here. I'm going to grab a different one. <laughs> one that I'm used to, I have to get used to the other one. This one, I'm just going to hit it with the water using my water brush. And it really moves the, the color around really well. And I can get my brush really wet without worrying about wrinkling the paper or soaking through. There won't be any of that. I'm just going to just go like this and just kind of spread it around. It also, if you notice, the the way that the pencil marks, they're going away. They're not even staying. They're, they're pretty much gone now. So that's kind of another feature that's nice, which on some papers, the pencil marks remain. So, you know, you've got options. And here I'll do a little thing where I'll take I'll make this like a red earth or something. And I'm going to use my brush and I'm going to pick up some of the color right off the pencil and see how that goes on. And that goes on really nice. So see how saturated the, um, how it really takes the colors just so nicely. And this is just watercolor pencil and graphite right now. So very smooth and no wrinkling. And if I, I could just saturate this with all kinds of color, I'll try a little gouache because it's just sitting here. Happen to have some gouache in my tray that dried out, and I love that I can just reconstitute it. <laughs> this is our artist gouache. Now, if I can, I can just do. Now I might be ruining this one. It's a cute little thing, but I would just want to take it to the limit. Just put some gouache on there and just see what happens. 
And I think I might even just go to the outside. And then I might even lift a little bit. And I'm gonna, my table's gonna get nice and messy, which is okay. <laughs> so just gonna go around and I've got some time. If this isn't soaking in the way that if I did have a Bristol board, th this would start looking really brushy. I would see a lot of little brush marks because it would just soak into the uh, fibers. Now that because this is not uh, fibrous, it has a different, it doesn't have a grain necessarily. It just has a surface that has some kind of soaking. You know, there is some absorbency, very little, but um, it does do it differently. Let's say if you were to have UPO, which is plastic, this would just bead right up, right? It would just lift right off and you wouldn't, um, you would see all kinds of little bubbles and you could see here, I'm not even using the right brush. I'm just using a kind of a pointy brush, but I'm trying to get some kind of smooth, we'll just see if I can get a smooth background or a background that I'm, I'm kind of looking for. Right now I'm just laying down the color, which is just a little gouache watered down. So it's watercolor basically. And then I'm gonna take my paper towel, my handy paper towel. And since this part is mostly dry, I'm gonna just kind of create like a little cloud and see if I can get those clouds. And I'm gonna get them. Yes, that's kind of what I'm looking for. It's just to blot it out. And you see, I'm able to lift up that color really well. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> and this part dried and this is still wet. So I'm able to just control the amount of color and no wrinkling, no soaking through. And I'm loving that. That's a fun little thing. I can play with it later, but just kind of wanted to see how this can be, it can actually be, it's almost like a page. I can do journal, a journal with this and I might be able to stitch through or staple through, but see how the gouache just went on there and no wrinkling. So that's that. I wanted to show you how nice it is for just quick sketches and uh, for any type of media, markers, pencils, colored pencils, watercolor pencils, just wax space pencils if you have some of those. I've got some sitting here. Those, that's a watercolor pencil. Um, I did have some wax based ones that will work too. And those would work like a resist, just like if you wanted to do a resist type project. I'm going to grab these. I love these. And these are fresh out of the bag. So I've got three new ones I'm so excited about. <laughs> so I'm going to do, I'm going to take another piece of, of this. I've got my little sketch here. I'll move the little pencils out of the way. I can come back to those in a bit, but at least I let this dry a little bit. And really, you can just keep working in layers, you know, with something like this. But here, I'm going to do something kind of a secret writing thing, you know, just so I don't know. I, I'm going to write some things there. I don't know what something nice. <laughs> and I call this secret writing, right? You don't know what it's going to look like, or you, you don't know what it says until, until you put something over it. Or you can just make like squiggles, or circles, little dots or little dashes. And I'm just, this is a wax, but it's not, um, it's not a uh, oil base. So it doesn't cause the wrinkling. It shouldn't cause it. And now I've got just this plain wax. And now I'm going to take some watercolor. And I'm just going to grab it from my little travel set here, a little new set. And you can see I've been using that. And uh, I'll just grab a wash brush, which I need to grab, or just something. It doesn't have to be a wash brush, but just one that's big enough to grab to get some color down quickly. And I'm going to take some pretty, I'm just going to pick any color, but I'm just going to grab some blue. I don't know why. I always gravitate towards blue. It's, I think it's my favorite color. And see how beautiful. See, it says hello there. <laughs> and I could make uh, maybe pick another color up. And I think this is really fun. This would be a fun little thing to do just with, you could trace over the words. If you like lay this on a white box, um, you could trace over the words. And then you could, so you could be legible and then write a letter with this. And it'd be fun, like a little secret letter. You'd send it like that. <laughs> Just, you can do that with the thin paper. It'd be really fun. The thin uh, mineral paper. But here we go. So just kind of making a fun little background here. And something I could probably use going forward in a mixed media piece. But also just a fun little activity. Just creating these fun 
washes of color over it. Now that's because it's water-based. If I use something else, it probably wouldn't resist as well, but it's like a little batik. So I can leave little areas of white. If I wanted to just do a little layer here, like on this piece here, I could actually take my wax crayon and just go over certain areas that I don't want to be gone. Like let's say I want to keep the, I want to keep the uh, white here. I'm just going very lightly. I'm not pushing down very hard at all. I'm just very, very light touch here. And then I want to keep the white in this area here, or just the whole color in general here. Just going to show you how fun this, these little crayons, there's another use for them too. And I'll share with you that as well. These make amazing page protectors. Let's say you have a journal that is uh, sticking because you've got sticky paint that's causing it to uh, the pages to stick. I'm sure you heard of that. Or if you have a collage, you know, anything that's, if you're gonna, um, the pages that stick, like I'll grab a page here in my old journal I've had forever. And because it's hard for me to explain <laughs> sometimes. But let's say this is an old, old journal from like the eighties, <laughs> kind of embarrassing actually. But anyway, there's, so these pages, sometimes the paint will cause, uh, you'll have some sticking. This little guy, keep it in your um, in your little journaling kit because all you need to do is just take that and just go over it really gently like this, just ever so lightly. And then you can rub it with a paper towel. And I kind of, I know I'm just going bouncing around, but I want you to know, this is one of the things I had forgotten to mention, I think in the last time we talked about these. I'm just doing a very light, just very, very light and then rub. And it doesn't show, but what will happen is it will never, the pages will never stick. So those are kind of little, something that I want you to know. You gotta have a set of these, put one in your journaling box, put one in your watercolor kit, because you've got three. Um, and then put one in your mixed media stash. So back to where I was going back. Now they come with a little sharp, you know, edge, kind of like crayon edge, but then they uh, will, you can kind of sharpen them, but just kind of rubbing them on a table like this and just keeping that, keeping that uh, sharp point. With, you know, even if you can also cut it down with a knife, like a little, an exacto knife, you can actually create the, uh, sharp edges or even a wedged edge. So I'm just showing you something here. I'm gonna go like really dark, just it's gonna be all of a sudden it'll be a nighttime thing. Um, this is gonna be, this is some ultramarine blue gouache. And here it is in the, in the tray. And gouache of course is very opaque. I can even mix it with a little black to just make it a little more sort of a, night sky, like it's nighttime. And I'm gonna just show you how you can retain the, the lights. So I see how where I did the very light touch of this. Now I will blot it with a paper towel to really get to get these little pieces off, even though I, I kind of like that effect. I think it's really pretty, uh, the little kind of the texture. But I could probably go over it even more or just blot very delicately with my towel. I can blot out that um, those little little drips that are on on top. So you see how I can just layer with that. So those having those little crayons, and now I'm just creating another deeper layer on my little piece here, and I'll have fun with this one. I think it's this one's going to be fun. And I'm just using gouache and a plain old brush, and I can make it go every which way. Like just kind of give it like texture, and then I'm going to take uh, my paper towel, and I'm going to try to get some of that extra that's sort of set, sitting. Let me just see if I can just blot it. Sometimes it's fun just to try something. Yep, no, I got rid of most of it, but <laughs> sorry about that. Anyway, that didn't work because I, I took off all of it, but you can see how you can create keep areas of light. You can also do something called scraffito, which is a technique where you can um, put you can put your color down and then you can put wax on top and another layer and then scratch through with your um, with a, some kind of tool that will actually create uh, these areas here. I'll just go around like this now. I probably shouldn't have covered it completely. I probably should just go around kind of like the way you would do masking fluid with your with your um, 
with your watercolors. You just you just go around, but you don't have to worry about the edges so much because your edges are already, you've got them defined with your uh, crayon. So there, I wanted to leave, lift that. That's, it's not the prettiest today. <laughs> so, now I'm gonna keep playing with this and later I'll maybe post it, but there'll be some things that I'll do to just kind of have some fun with that, but no wrinkling, it's not lifting. And I'll let that dry. Now, the, what's the next thing? I just, there's one that I really wanna show you and I've been excited about it. And I wanna make sure you see it today. So. Here's this one drying, and I'm loving that, lifting, how that looks. This one, I'll put aside and do something else with that. Now, you know that you can do stencils, right, with the, which I'm going to just do this real quick. While I'm at it, I'm going to grab a stencil, and I just happen to have any, I'll just grab just one that I happen to, my first one. And I'm going to try this because I've already kind of wrecked this, and I kind of wanted to see what I can do. I'm just gonna put a stencil right over it and see what I can do. I'm gonna take off, I'm gonna take off, try to take off as much as I can of what I just put down over the stencil. And let's see what happens. It might be just a little too wet, but let's see. Just gonna rub out that. And then I'm gonna get another towel or just, just to blot it a little bit. And then we'll see what happens. So I've got some of the stuff because of the crayon is there. And then let's just see. Well, that's kind of fun. So you can see how you can just kind of play and have fun. And I see the little layer underneath. And then what I could do is after it dries, I can go do some more things. But now I'm enjoying, this is, now it's getting to be more fun. So speaking of playing with different yeah. things, um, yeah. Tracy had a really interesting idea. She asked, could you put a piece of crumpled plastic wrap on the wet paint and get interesting patterns on the mineral paper while using the wax resist? Yes, wouldn't that be fun? Oh gosh, do I have some saran wrap? Um, hmm, I hope I had I do I <laughs> think somewhere. You know what? I've got some crayon here. And I think it, yes, you could just crumple up plastic. Yeah, I've got something right here. I've got this, so I'll try that. Let's oh, do Oh, perfect. Let's do it. All right. So let me see. I I would be would be fun to try it with ink, but I'm just gonna use some really dark. This, I would try it with some sumi ink too. I think that'd be fun. But let me know if you want me to try it with a sumi ink. But let me just use this Payne's gray or this very dark color and try to get, get a dark layer of paint on top. I'm just going to try, or maybe some black gouache. Yeah, let's try that. Of course, black is kind of a very, really very opaque, kind of, you know, darkens everything so much. But let's just see. We've got one layer underneath. I could also wet this if I wanted to with a spray. I can re-wet it. Let me just try that. Just a touch of water, just to kind of lift it off again and maybe put some turquoise. I love this turquoise. So I'm gonna just stick some of that on there. And I've wet it. So let's try crumpling. Now, of course, this is a, a bag. It's not really a, not like a, it's kind of, I'm gonna cut it real quick. This is a regular baggie. And so it's not like a little thin, like saran wrap, which you can really get lots of nice wrinkles and puckers with, with. but at least this maybe will show kind of what I'm talking about. So I'm just gonna flatten it out and then I'm gonna just lay it on. And you can see now, see those, see how it's lifting? I don't know if you can see that, but unfortunately this is not, we gotta get rid of this thing. Let's see if I can, get this out of the way and then we'll play. But yeah, saran wrap would work a lot better than this. Just don't have it at my fingertips here and I don't wanna keep you as I rummage through my drawers <laughs> looking for saran wrap. But yeah, what, what, what I would do is leave it. Like, let's say you, you put it on and you wrinkle it the way you want it to wrinkle and you get the bubbles the way you like them. Like this is a very large texture because the bag isn't very flexible. But if I just leave it and then let it dry overnight, I'm going to get this incredible, these edges, and you can get bubbles and edges and all kinds of wonderful things. What I'll do is I'll, I'll leave this alone, and then I will um, take it off when it dries, and I'll send a picture to Phoebe so she can post it for anybody that wants to see. We'll do, we'll just put this aside and let it do its thing. It's going to be like one of those patience things, right? You have to be patient, but it looks really neat um, from here. So was that, I hope that helped with um, her question. Or 
hopefully that, you know, just try it. I mean, that's the best thing is just try it. Now I wanted to show you because I want to make sure we have time and yeah, we do. So I'm going to put, you know, just put these away for now. I'm not going to put them away forever, but I kind of discovered, you know, that alcohol ink is everybody loves alcohol ink on mineral paper. I, I've been having fun. This one, I haven't, it's not, it just started it a little, a couple hours ago. So I'm going to show you how I did this painting, which I absolutely saw this on the post. This is a uh, alcohol ink mixed with watercolor together. Um, I start with the alcohol ink and then I do the um, watercolors and it takes time. It was something that took a few hours, but I really love the results. So I'm going to show you how I created these translucent poppy like florals, even though it's sort of abstract, but I want you to see how I did it because it's just so much fun. And I did the same thing with this. This is just more abstract. I did it uh, where it's, I wanted it to kind of look like an ocean theme. It's not there yet, but I'll keep working on it. But what's great about the mineral paper is it accepts alcohol inks and it gives you a texture. And I'm going to turn it. Can you, if you can see the texture, that shine and that kind of amazing, it gives you a texture uh, that it kind of creates these little edges. And I can't really feel them with my fingers, but I can see them. And I really like that. Now, if that is something that you don't like, if you want something that's not going to, um, that doesn't have that shine, you can always hit it with a matte spray and then it will just even right out again. But I love that shiny stuff. So I'm gonna show you how I did these and I'm gonna do it on a smaller piece. So I don't have to, let's see, we'll get you. This one's about, that's one that's kind of cut in half, I think. Yeah, June pointed seven. out that the blue looks like batik. This one does, huh? Now let me yeah. ask for you. Might as well work on this one a little because it's sort of in progress. But I want to show you some of the things I've been doing. With by the know. way, Jane also asked, and I don't know. Maybe we'll mention. Uh, maybe show it later. But I just wanted to mention now, so I don't forget. Mm -hmm. She wanted to know if you use a pointed stick or a dip pen, will it make a line like cotton paper on the mineral paper? Right. Yes, you can. Um, so I have like a style. I use a silicone stylus, but yeah, you can use anything. Um, you can use a stick. Absolutely. Um, uh, something like even um, you could probably I'm wondering if this will work. I don't want to ruin my little bone folder, but you could scratch into it. Let's see if I can get anything with it. Probably not with the uh, the alcohol, but maybe with some. Yeah, maybe I think she might have even meant on regular paper. I think that comment might have happened before you brought yeah. this one out. Okay, got it. So you basically, you're wondering if we can like lift or scratch color off. Is that kind of what the question was, right? So um, I'm not sure if that's quite what Jane was asking. And sorry, Jane, I might've gotten the timing of it wrong. If you could clarify, if you want to know if you could use the tool to um, kind of like make a mark in the paint after it's already been laid down, or if you mean more like marking the blank paper. Yeah, Just that's kind of what I did. Well, I'm going to show you something because I think I know. I think I know what she's talking about. Here, I was actually do, playing with this earlier. I actually, I'm going to grab the gouache. You can use acrylic paints as long as they're not dry. I'm just going to let me just see that. something kind of thick. Acrylic paints will work. The gouache. Uh, let's see where to go. I'm trying to. Oh, here we go. Something large. I'm just going to put some color down on. On, on this and it's going to be a kind of a ooh that's bright <laughs> let me get let me get that a little tone down here for us it's pretty but it's just really bright so I'm going to just put a little black kind of tone that down to make it more of a deep color and this is straight gouache straight out of the straight out and I've got a little purple mixed with it which I like I think that's pretty and then I'll just take some of what's left in my thing here and just kind of pick up some color. Oop. I wanted it to be dark so as you can see. So you can see the dramatic change here. All right, here we go, that's some of that. Now, if you're thinking of a tool to scrape through, I've got, this is a, this is silicone. So I'm able to, it's a soft tool. I'm able to make marks. Let me try the back of a brush. That's kind of the, like a stick, right? And I'm going to make marks. See how I made beautiful marks with that? Very nice. So, yep. Um, let's see. The stick really works well. The back of this brush. Wow, I like that. So you can make marks into the wet paint. What else? What else? Let's try my bone folder. 
We have to get a new one, Phoebe, if I wreck it. <laughs> yep, marks. You can do it, but you just want to wipe off the, um, you know, wipe off the paint in between. But nice. yes. And yeah, I do think that is what Jane was asking because she mentioned um, in a follow up comment that she uses a fine tool to make wine and wet watercolor and it makes yeah. a darker line. Oh, a darker line. Oh, she said. Oh, sorry. I see what you mean. Yeah. Okay, darker it line. A darker line that collects no. the pigment. Veins I'd say and leaves, probably lines not. And petals. Yeah, I'd say probably not. No, I, but I'm going to try it because I'm going to try it. I've got a little scraping tool somewhere here. I know I've got something. I've got a metal. Let me try it. It has to be something like a metal. Or a pin. Let me just. I know, I've got it. I know. I know exactly what you're talking about now. Because in watercolor paper, you can do that. So I've got an awl. It's got a sharp point. I'm going to try this. So I'm going to scratch into my. Um, I think I know exactly what she's asking. But we're going to find out. This will be the first time because I've never done this. But I'm just scratching into the mineral paper. Now you got to be careful because I went pretty deep. So just when you do that, just using an awl is probably a little bit much, but at least you can get an idea of what I'm doing. I'm just gently making a sort of scratching the surface and we're gonna see if it looks, if it soaks in differently. That's what she's asking. And so in cotton paper, if you scratch into the cotton paper and then you paint over it, it goes through the sizing and it makes a darker line. And I don't know if this is gonna happen with this, but let's give it a try. Cause we're here and this is why we're here. We can answer your questions right when we want to know. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and try. I'm going to make a nice little, uh, these are leaves. So I'm going to try to make them green. We have some yellow green. Let's see if we can get that look she's looking for. Now look at it. Look what it's doing. It kind of is. Wow. I did not know it would do that. So I'm going to just blot it a little bit and see if that, if that uh, shows to on your end. I don't know if you see it, but I do. It's a very fine line. It's not as pronounced. I can as... faintly see it. It would yeah. maybe after you do it, it'd be great if you could bring it slightly closer to the camera. But yeah, yeah what I can do is show you. Actually, I can bring it <laughs> much closer. See how it made that dark line? Yeah. Oh so, yay! Oh you know, yeah. Hello. Thank you for that. You see, I love you guys for you. Can, there, there it is. Those, these are the lines that I had scraped in. Uh, I probably, like I said, went a little heavy, and I kind of cut through the. It also leaks a lighter line too. I love this. Of course, that's the one where that I had put some wax, so it's not going to go through at all with the wax. But where I didn't put the wax, I'm getting that dark line that she was talking about. So wow, 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 wow! How fun is that? So you know, you just never know <laughs> until you try something. But I'm going to get it closer now as it's soaking in. You can see it's darker where I scratched. So, wow, that's Very fun. Very cool. Yeah, and I'm just gonna lift it up a little. I'm gonna try to pick it up so you can still see the lines. I'm just gonna dab it a little bit. Yep, still see them, but I, it really is more pronounced when I have more color. This had wax, so it's not gonna show much at all, but it's very subtle, but it's really, you can scrape and do some graffito type things like, so now that you've got, now that you started me on that, <laughs> I'm like, oh boy. So I've got my handy all, but I'm gonna be nice to it. I'm gonna be nice with it this time. I'm not um, gonna be too rough, but this is all made with alcohol so far, except for the acrylic dots or acrylic Posca markets. So I'm just gonna try something since we're, we're at this. I'm gonna see if I can even get any, oh, another idea, not at all, sorry. Here we go. Create a create of fun here. This is what I would suggest. I just now remembered uh, a dull, a fairly dull, uh, not a brand new blade. Please don't use a brand new blade, but a blade, an exacto blade that's been that's kind of worn. Let's try this. I think this is going to be what we're looking for. So I'm going to scrape some lines. If I do it at an angle and not cut through the paper. I'm getting some lines and I'll show you in a minute, but they're coming through. And I'm planning to make some lines that kind of look like just little seaweed. I don't know, it's kind of abstracty, but I want some lines and I'm gonna show you closely. But you can see those. I'm scraping those in with my blade and I'm doing it very, I just gotta be calculated because you don't wanna tear through the mineral paper, but you can get some, 
lines. Now that's just with the very heavy duty, really heavy duty, um, what's that stuff called? Alcohol inks. Now I think with watercolor, it'd be a lot better. Or even acrylics will be really nice. And that's just something, you know, to try. So you, yeah, you can do it. It's thick enough. Now I wouldn't have tried now, this. Here's another thing to try that yeah. Jane's also throwing out there. I love she it. Thank you, Jane. Sandpaper. Oh yeah. Yeah. Let's, you know what? I've got some. Let me just. <laughs> Thanks. So, you know, I've got everything in my little set, in my little room here. And uh, I will grab some sandpaper. I know I've got some here somewhere. Yeah. We're in lots of sponges, sandpaper. Oh, here it is. Now this Karen's is studio is like a store. I know it's terrible. It's good. It's good. Okay, this is a three. Oh, I think it's three. I'm not sure what the grid is, but I'm going to do it because I know I'm not. I'm not attached to this painting at all. Well, let's try sandpaper. <laughs> See what happens. Now, what it does, it's not really removing my. It's actually softening some of the areas that I didn't really like much, and it's also taking down that shiny little pieces here. But let's see if I can just get a little farther down. And it's taking off some of the paint. This is like an alcohol. It's going to act way different with, with the uh, watercolor. Just so you know. Oh, I want you to. I'll, I'll come to that in a minute. Something that looks really cool that I had done earlier. The sandpaper is going to lift. You can see it's lifting. I'm going to go ahead and show you a little closer, but I'm going to take one little part and I'm going to just lift. See, it's lightening a little bit. I'll bring it up a little closer. So sandpaper is awesome. So you could be pretty rough with this stuff. Pretty amazing. I'm just kind of softening that. Now, I was going to put some color over it. I want to try watercolor over this. This is all alcohol. So let's just see what happens when we put some watercolor over it. So does that answer your, I hope that helps with the sandpaper. <laughs> it does soften areas if you want soft areas to be softer. And if you want to, like blend, like I'm just getting a nice blend here, which is really nice. And it's removing some of the color, but not much. And again, this is what this is alcohol. So alcohol is going to act different. And now I'm going to grab, since I've already got my paintbrush and I've already wrecked this, I'll keep this side kind of pristine if I can. Not, not that I should, but I'm this just. A, we have a lot of interest today. And I know. Um, you were saying that you've just been dabbling in the alcohol inks. Have you tried it on Yupo paper? Because someone mentioned that they've been having a little bit of trouble with alcohol ink drying on the Yupo. I'm wondering if it is better using mineral paper. Well, there are there are school, there's people who love just using alcohol inks on Yupo. They love it. Um, I only use it on mineral paper. I have Yupo paper. Do you, I mean, um, alcohol inks are going to behave differently on mineral paper. They, they, there's a little bit of, this is kind of pretty. Um, they're a little, they're, because alcohol will soak, there's a little absorbency in this. Um, rather than if you are using UPO, that's plastic. It's not soaking in at all. So you're, you're not going to, it dries on, floats on top, but it doesn't soak in. Like the way this with mineral paper, there is some, there is some um, soaking in. So um, UPO is just another experience. I, I mean, I don't, I know there's some people who just love it. So, but I don't use it because I like mineral paper better. And I always have liked it way before mineral paper was mineral paper. Um, the, it only came out of Canada at the time. And it, I was able to buy uh, big sheets of this stuff um, from Canada. It's, I don't think they bring it in anymore. But uh, I think this stuff is, it's so, so much better to work with, I think, than Yupo. And I like that it comes from, it's renewable in a sense. It's recyclable, kind of. I mean, it's not like normal recycle. I like, I like that. I like what's happening here. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm having fun with that. Um, so if I wanted to now, I could, like, I've got this nice softness. I like it better than this, actually. So I'll probably just do the whole thing. Um, there's just all... So I hope that answers the question about the UFO. I hope that helps. It's something that you can try, you know, get a little pad of it, and just try it next to the mineral paper and decide because some people love it. And there's artists that I, I make beautiful artworks on UFO. And then there's, um, there's not enough information or artists that have this paper in their hands. So 
you know, it's not, you don't see as much art on, on this, but if you check out Pete Morris's artwork, which is, he has his own website. This is on the cover. His artwork's right here on this cover. That's on this paper. And it's stunning. It's just a watercolor. And I love, you can't get this with Yuko at all. There's just no way that, that you could get that. And this. I'll share um, Pete Morris's information in the comments too. Yeah. Just, yeah, because I think that's watercolor. And um, somebody, I'll just mention, because I don't know if the comments will be visible to everyone afterwards. It's kind of hard to go through. We have some people who I believe are like alcohol ink artists and instructors here today. Yeah. Um, so Lori mentioned, because I believe she has experience with UPO as well, yeah. that alcohol ink will lift off of UPO with blending yeah. solution or isopropyl alcohol. Yeah. Um, but then also, Karen, to what you were saying, uh, Denise, who asked the original question, mentioned she'll she'll try on both the mineral and the UPO paper. <laughs> yeah, because you know, might as well try it all because it's fun. Um, this, I really like the mineral papers properties because it has that slight eggshell. And we talk about eggshell, the way eggshell absorbs paint or color, like, you know, when you color your eggs for Easter, they, they take, they kind of absorb the color just a little, not all the way, not too much, but a little. Um, and I do have some UPO somewhere and I could show you the difference when you lift, when you drop the uh, alcohol ink on this it spreads a little bit more than the UPO because it does absorb somewhat. It doesn't absorb to go all the way through. You can notice here on my opposite side, there's no alcohol, you know, nothing soaks through. But, and I put a lot Speaking of alcohol. Of absorbency, I think that's kind of like going off of this. Jane also was asking what kind of adhesives work to glue of the mineral paper in order to collage or glue it to itself. So let's say you have like, okay, this little piece here and I'm, I'm ready to glue it onto something. I do have glue, <laughs> lots of that. You could use, um, it because it doesn't wrinkle, it depends on the size. So let me just tear this up here. And then I wanna show you the fun thing with the, my little fun thing. Oops, gotta get it started. So that's no longer a journal page. We'll just call that a embellishment to put on a journal. And let's say you wanna put it in a journal, a blank journal. Um, of course, I don't have any blank journal pages, but on a piece of paper, uh, let's say you want to put it on watercolor paper or you've got a mixed media piece. Let's see, where I know I've got something in here. Um, you can use white glue. You can use a glue stick. Just, you know, like these types of glues here. You've got a glue stick. You've got, this is just white glue. You've got PVA, which is white glue too. Let me, let me find it because I want to show you. I'll just grab a, a journal page. I've got one right here. A blank, it's not blank, but I can make it a blank page there for you. In my little behind the curtain thing going, right? <laughs> okay, so here's a blank journal page. I'll just tear it out. So you want to... That's just regular uh, mixed media paper. And I'm just going to show you, if you want it to glue, of course, I scratched it here, but you can use just PVA. And it's, what's nice about it, it's not going to wrinkle. Like your, your your paper might wrinkle a little, but it won't. So what I'm going to do is just going to put it on. It's a lot of glue, but oh well. <laughs> I'm just going to let it get all over the place. I should have done this on a piece of uh, another piece of paper, really. But anyway, you'll see what I mean. What I'll do is I'll just fold this. And I'll just turn this over. This is the blank journal page right there, right here. Let's pretend right here. That's the journal page. <laughs> and now I've got my a piece of mineral paper and I'm going to just finish. I'm just going to put that in the center and lay it down. And now it's not moving. It's not going to wrinkle or buckle. And I could put some more glue on that tip here because it's not laying, it's not laying down. There we go. And then I'll press this because I have hand, ink all over my hands. So I've got a mess, but um, what I'll do is uh, this with this, I'll press it. And what's going to wrinkle slightly is the actual page not the paper. So I would, because of that reason, this is expanding. The paper is going to expand a little. This is not. So you just want to lay it under something kind of heavy, you know, like between two books or in a book press, if you have something like that. But, you know, you can, but yeah, it's great. You can glue it right onto uh, surface. Um, this is perfect. And it's not going to wrinkle, but you just because this is going to, you're going to have some shifting or swelling of the fibers in the paper. And that won't, so it's gonna change it up. So you just need to go ahead and put it under something heavy. So let me show you something that's gonna be fun. 
I'm going to show you my little fun technique and I've had, I've been so excited. <laughs> this is kind of, I want to show you how I made those poppies because it was a blast. Um, unless you have other questions, I'm happy to, I'm happy to share with you with anything I can think of or we can think of. So the poppies. So what I've got is I've got some alcohol inks and I've got, these are so old. I don't even, these, it's amazing. The, before it was, before even, I think Tim Holtz was just, you know, they used to call it Adiranda, Adirondacks, I remember now. Anyway, different packaging. I have no idea what the packaging is now. But the good news is this stuff lasts forever because, you know, I mean, it just lasts forever. You just, a little goes a long way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some poppies and I'm going to do it with my, I've got a compressor right under my table and I have an airbrush that I never have been using. And I have to, I told, I, I mean, I haven't been using it, just haven't been. I haven't, I've been bad. I was meant to use it. Just life gets in the way. And usually with these airbrushes, you know, you put the color, uh, you put the color in the thing and I, there we go. It lifts up and it goes inside there. <laughs> I can't lift it up. But this is an Iwata airbrush. It is like fantastic. I'm going to just push the thing. There it is. It's a dual action airbrush. And the cool things, you can use it for other things other than just putting a liquid in it. I mean, we've done t-shirts. My husband and I do t-shirts or we've done in the past. Um, I've done large paintings with these airbrushes, but here's another use for it. I'm so thrilled. Now I'm just going to keep this by my desk and I'll start really airbrushing again. So I wanted to tell Iwata, thank you for this airbrush because I'm, I'm so excited. You can't do this with a straw. So that's why I'm really excited to share with you. Now, if you have, if you wanted to try something like a, you know, those air cans that you, you know, the air cans that you can buy that take the dust out, that would probably work. But you'd want to use the little thin uh, tube that it comes with and you could get the same effect with an air can. And I'm sure there's some other things out there. A straw maybe, I think if you can get a narrow straw that would blow the air you know, very narrowly, you can do that too. So you don't have to have an airbrush, but I wanted to show you, you can, <laughs> you can have an airbrush. So what I do is I'm going to put a little color down and this is, ooh, that's going to go too much. So I'm going to I really suggest doing it with rubber gloves, by the way, because I don't, this is not alcohol, but boy, if you aren't careful, this stuff gets everywhere. So I'm just going to try to be cool. I know I wasn't cool. I'm just going to drop the color down here and there, like a flower petals in a field. Okay, there we go. Just got that. And then I'm going to do another layer. So this is called current. So I'm keeping in the same color ranges, like reds and burgundies, and I'm not going into greens or blues. I'm just going to keep it. I'm going to drop these colors inside each other. I'm going to get some nice, dense color shapes. And you can see it spreads. With the Upo, I don't think it spreads as much. It's just different. It's totally different. Um, I've got some colors here I didn't want there. Then I've got some raspberry. And I'm going to try not to spread it out too much. I'm just going to, I should let it dry, is what I should do oh, between colors. So I'm going to use my airbrush just to dry. Because the alcohol inks do dry fairly fast. I'm just drying it so that it doesn't spread anymore. As long as it's wet, it spreads. That's the thing. It's a, you know, it just spreads like crazy while it's wet. And it dries a little bit lighter on the paper. I don't know how it dries on Upo, but I think it dries a little bit softer on the paper. Now I'm putting some raspberry and I'm going to sprinkle it here and there just to have color here and there. Just some raspberry. And I'm creating layers. You can see it makes rings. And I'm going to bring that up closer to you so you can see. By the way, Karen, Jim mm -hmm. is asking, what is the name of the glue spreader? Um, she said it looks like silicone, I think. This? Yeah. This is a catalyst. And the item number, it's a catalyst by Princeton. And the item number is W06. It's amazing for glue spreading, for uh, gesso, for, um, you know, large areas. And what's nice, it's silicone. I'll let that dry and it can peel right off. So um, it's very nice for if you don't want to get glue on your fingers or if you want to spread large, large areas of paint. And you can also create designs. So it's a silicone W06 catalyst. I love these things. I love all the, having being in the art supply industry, as you know, Phoebe, you get access to the coolest things that you would never know. With You know, you just wouldn't yes, see them. It's in really fun. Life. Right? <laughs> All right, so I've got three layers. I've got at least three layers in here. Now what I also have 
is I have instead of that blending solution, which I think costs, you know, probably costs money, but I I have 91% alcohol in this little thing. Um, I can also use really light colors, like uh, very pale colors to do this uh, technique I'm going to show you. But I'm going to show you how I made the petals. And that's kind of where I want you to see. It's a kind of a controlled thing. Let's see if I can do it with this. I have not tried it with this. So I'm going to put a little of this color down. Maybe it will work. Let me just give it a try. See how light that is? I'm going to move really quickly here. And I need to do it quickly. There. That's one petal done. It's a little too much color. So I'll just... Try the, uh, I'm going to go to my rubbing alcohol, 91%. That's, I'm going to still make it work though. I'm going to put a little bit right on the edge. And I've got my ear happening. And I'm going to let that kind of sit there and dissolve the alcohol just a little. And then I'm going to blow it out just a little like that. Um, this one just got a little blown out. So I'm going to try to fix that. I don't know if I can, but I'll give it a shot. I'm going to put a little alcohol right there. Just let it soak in and dissolve the alcohol. And then I'm going to blast it again. Okay, there it's starting to look like a flower petal. Yeah. And then I'm just going to control the where it's going because I'm thinking that since I am doing a flower, I'm just going to put a little bit on there and then blow it out just enough to make the petal. So that's how I did those. And I, the first thing, and I'll do one more here, and I just rotate the paper. Oops, that's not enough. I need to do it again. There. So you see how I'm getting these petals. That's the trick. It's, it's this I want to air brush. Now, there, I love that. Yay. So that's one flower shape. You know, this, this was a, a mistake, but using this works. I'll do it again with uh, on a fresh center here. Just a little touch and wait for just a second and then blow out and you've got your petals. And then I'll be able to make the centers dark again with maybe some black or I can go with layers. There you go, just a little, just a little bit. Oops, that didn't do it. I'm gonna give it some more. Nope, sometimes you just have to, which I like that one. That one's looking more like an orchid, actually. <laughs> so these are like abstract flowers. Now, there. You need to angle the brush at a certain angle, too, like I'm noticing. If I go straight across, it's gonna get these longer petals. And if I go more at an angle, I get these little splatters of little, like little leaves. I don't know what those are called, but anyway, I'll show you what I mean. This is sideways. Nope, I was wrong. It didn't work. <laughs> Still looks great, but there we go. So that you can see what I did to make oh, too much fun. I can just sit here all day. <laughs> I'm just going to show you how gorgeous that is. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. You know, there's an artist, and Phoebe, if you can rem remember her name, I hope I, I just forgot again. But an artist that was uh, featured on our website, I think. Deborah was her name? I think you mean Deborah Jason. <laughs> yes, that right. Deborah, Deborah Jason. This is, she got me started. You're going to have to blame her for this because <laughs> I saw the video and she did these beautiful abstract, uh, very long tendril, looks like very undersea kind of things. And that's what got me on this. And I remembered I had the uh, airbrush and I thought, why not? Let me try that and I tried the ten tendrical thing and it didn't work, but I went crazy on the flowers because I thought that because flowers are my thing and I'm not a big abstract can't it's hard for me to com be completely abstract. I need to have some representation. But her work, if you haven't seen it, go check it out, please, because it's gonna make you'll see where this came from. It's exactly it did I don't create we don't get inspiration in a cave, you know, we usually get inspired by other people. I've never actually, it's rare that I get these little light bulbs that go off without having someone to give credit to for what, you know, what happens. And it might be, it's different because I'm a different, I create differently, just like everybody creates differently. But, ooh, that's pretty. That's enough of that. I'm going to stop that part. You know, we do have some questions about this. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like we're really testing you and what you have in your studio. Yeah. June was asking, one, would this technique work with liquid watercolor? And then someone else asked, Denise asked, would a straw work? Uh, I believe she means instead of the- Yeah, uh, I think so, brush. Denise. I think a straw would work. Um, I've got some, you're going to laugh. You are testing my studio, but you know what? I'm going to do it. There's some hydrous watercolors. Now, it won't be as pretty, but let's try. So this is my base. Let me just explain this before I move on to the watercolor. Um, 
This is done. I'm gonna let that just sit. I'll probably do some little dark, just dark areas of uh, to make the uh, centers again. So like I'd probably just make a little tiny, if I can even do it, to make the center like that. You know, uh, here and there. That one might not be ready. But I'm just gonna make the little centers to kind of give depth. Then I'm gonna sit it aside. The next thing I'll do is start watercoloring, and that's what how I got that one painting. So that's gonna be fun. So you can just see the final the thing okay that's basically what it is okay so let's do the watercolors i'm going to set that aside because that's going to look fun when it's done and i'm going to grab the watercolor and do the same try the same thing do i have a straw yeah i have a straw let me try let's try the straw well oh, i know i do because we've done things with straws let's try it there we go have straw all right watercolor liquid watercolors. So these are Dr. Martin's. Now, Dr. Martin's, um, it's going to be different. I'm going to try, I don't have a lot of liquid watercolors. I've got yellow and magenta, and I have some pale blue. Okay, that's what I've got, or turquoise. So we're going to try this. Why not? Let's see what happens. And I've got my handy airbrush, and then I can try the straw. So with liquid watercolors, we're going to drop it down, but see it's not spreading at all. There's no spread. So that might make it fun. So let's try. I wonder if I should put use alcohol. Let's just see if I use alcohol, what happens? I've never done alcohol with water, but watercolor, but let's just, ooh, look, look, look at that. Let's try it. I'm going to take my straw. It's going to be a totally different look. But yes, <laughs> there it is, sort of, right? Now let's try it with just water. Now, just a touch of water. I'm going to spray. Oh, I don't know. I have to use water. I want to just drop plain old water on it. I have no clear water. Oh, yes, I do. Here's how you do it. You just take your water brush and just push, push, push it right on there like that. There you go. Let's see what that happens. Not the same, <laughs> but, but it's fun. And it is fun that I was able to get that spread with the, um, with the rubbing alcohol. Let me just try it now with the airbrush and see if I got anything here. See if it makes a difference. Okay, so now interesting, the watercolor, whoa, interesting. I'm able to get little, tiny little branches. With these, I'm loving this airbrush, I'm sorry, but I can't stop. Makes for a lot easier, uh, rather than, it's, it's a lot easier than a straw, but you can do it with a straw. It just takes a little, more control and I would use alcohol. So here it is. Let me try it again. I've got this alcohol. And by the way, wet. Karen, I think you were kind of doing it earlier, but um we have a question about if you can watercolor over the inks, if maybe you could also show us a little bit after. Yeah, you mean watercolor over the alcohol? Yes, I believe that's what Chris yeah. is asking. Yeah. Okay, absolutely. So using your watercolors, if you have if you don't want to buy alcohol inks, and you know they're not, it's an investment, and they're not cheap. So if you have liquid watercolors, or you already have just watercolor, you can take your, you can use liquid, or you can use them probably out of this, and I'm sure because it's all the same stuff. This you can even use some out of your pans. You can make a, you know, a wash of color, and then you put 91 percent. Make sure you get the 91% because then you, you really have a little bit of water, not much. But look what it's done with just the 91%. All I did was drop it right onto my watercolor. And then what I could do is I'm going to try <laughs> making, <laughs> that's a little rough. Um, I'm going to try it again. I'm going to put some water alcohol right on the edge. Wow. Oh, look at that. See, ooh, see, that's pretty. I love that. I don't know if you see it, but I'm having a lot of fun. <laughs> see how it's just doing some cool things? So you don't need to, sorry, Ranger, but you don't need to buy this stuff if you don't want to. If you, just, if you already have enough alcohol in your stash or watercolors, that is gorgeous. And I can see flowers happening right now with this. I can see just the like berries. I'm seeing berries. Do you see berries? <laughs> I do. So, and then I could just go through here and I can take some, color and yes what were we going to do next we were going to do something i forgot phoebe what was it <laughs> can you try on um, the watercolor over the ink 
Yes. Okay. So now I'm and able I think to. You might have been doing it on your other blue piece. I I don't know. I'm a little blurry. No, I have it. But let me show you. Since now this okay. is dry enough, I can go ahead and start working on it. All right. So here's what. Yes, you can do watercolors over. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to just take my watercolor, and I'm going to start by. Now this is the process of that painting that I did. So let's say you wanted to do the centers a little darker. I didn't really get really dark here. But let's say I do. Um, I'm just going to grab some color and I'm going to just take some dark, I don't know what that is, um, kind of a purple. This is the purple lake. Yeah, that's pretty. And I'm mixing it a little bit with just the, in the you know, the Payne's gray, just to you make it really dark. And yes, you can watercolor over the alcohol inks. So if I wanted to just create a center, I'm going to go right over it and I'm going to show you it doesn't bead up. You can see, see how it's just laying down nicely? I don't know if you can see that. Oh, where is it? There it is. Oh, there's the camera. So it just goes on there. That's not dark. I made it dark on purpose. I'm going to make another center here so you can see. It goes over beautifully. Actually, there's no, it just goes over it. So it's pretty amazing. Now, let me show you when, when you're doing like to make the stems and the leaves and all that. I just started with some greens and started to bring, make little stems. And I'm thinking poppies because, but these could be anything. They could be rose, sort of a, they're abstracty, but I'm gonna start my, my, my stem. And I'm just gonna kind of go over it a little bit, but I'm gonna make my stems kind of coming out of the flowers. And you can use them, you can go over it just a little bit, make, because these are translucent leaves. And I'm just gonna make stems and I'm gonna kind of go over it somewhat and go through them a little bit because some of these will be overlapping others and some will go behind. And then just basically that's, this is how I started. Now there's a lot more work that happens, but you can see I'm able to go layer over the alcohol, no problem. So it works, it works. It's a great mixed media um, surface. And I don't know how this would work with wa watercolor paper. I have no idea. I don't think it will work as easily, uh, but you know, you never know. <laughs> but this is basically how I just started to work with this. And I just kept building layers and kind of, fall, you know, like making small little buds like up here and then bringing them down and just started building layers and layers. And it took, it was quite a bit of time, but I, I did it. So you can just kind of make your, your plant, you know, like little, one of those little buds. If you're doing poppies, they have like these little things that kind of fall downwards. There's a called buds, I guess. And I'm just using a basic a brush that uh, we will also another one that we're going to be bringing in as well. I keep teasing you with new stuff, but you know, then I just start to take colors and I start to just change up the colors just to give it like a background. Like this one is going to be a field. Um, basically, there won't be any sky. It's going to be all green. So I'm just going to kind of create maybe other small flowers too in the back. Of course, this is the green. So I'm just going to make kind of continue that and make, you know, just break, kind of leaf things and go over some of it and go behind and just start building and layering. It takes time. This is going to, this won't be done in the, um, and are we doing okay as far as our time? We're way over, aren't we? We're a little past the hour mark, but um, we just have a lot of comments coming in. People are so interested and I'm still um, responding to people. Hopefully I haven't been missing anyone. I'm so sorry if I have. Um, well, if you need any, you know, yeah, this, I mean, I'll, I'll keep painting because um, this is fun. <laughs> but you tell me, because I know the, if there's a giveaway, whatever, you know, you want to get done for sure. I'm, I'm, I think I've done all my demoing, but I certainly am here for any questions. Let me go back over. I mean, I'm still uh, painting, but I don't know if I consider that. <laughs> I think I've kind of covered everything as much as I can, but you can see how this will just keep building and building and, and it will eventually have the depth and I'll want to keep adding darks and layering with the watercolor. And it's now the alcohol ink is done, but I, now can I paint over with, alcohol afterwards? I don't know. I didn't try that, but let's see, I'm going to just do a piece over that. So it kind of shows, it sort of like looks like these are kind of coming through 
Here we go, something up like this. And it really does gorgeous uh, right on top of the alcohol. So that's a, that's something I've only recently discovered is that I, I can actually paint with, with the alcohol and doesn't have to be alcohol inks. It can be just 91% alcohol and your, um, your, your watercolors. And then you've got an alcohol ink. You're good to go. Um, so real quickly, I'll just, um, cause I want to make sure I answer people. Somebody asked if we have, uh, fine detail brushes, like fine tip detail brushes. So Yasutomo over the years has had lots of different kinds of products. So there might be some like vintage Yasutomo fine tip brushes out there on the market. Mm -hmm. um, but at the moment, I think the most recent one we have was our Silverado brush series. Um, we are discontinuing those though, but we are going to be introducing new brushes, which Karen's actually kind of previewing here. Um, they're not available yet, but that's coming out 2023, so they'll be here soon. Um, but we we probably you probably can still find the Silverado brushes um, out at various stores or online. Um, but just to let you all know, we do have some new brushes coming in. The brush that Karen got is a larger size, maybe like it's the largest uh, one. Yeah, the largest one. Okay, but we do have smaller sizes um, available. You get a really tiny one. If I had a sample. The um, you could also use right now. We have an SW series. It's a Jap It's an Asian brush, but it has a very gives you a very fine line. The SW uh, double zero, I think. That that gives you really super fine lines. So that's something that's available now. All right. So I'm just gonna go through the uh, comments one more time to see if I missed anything. I am. Closing the giveaway, so I'll just uh, put a little comment in there right now. Giveaway is now closed. Um, just to say that I won't be taking any more entries because I'm going to be looking at comments before this point now. Um, and let's see, we got a lot of excitement. People are super inspired to try the techniques that you've shown today, Karen. Oh, good. So excited. I'm having fun. I'm glad, glad you're going to have fun too. Yeah. And then <laughs> I have see I'm old stuff. <laughs> yeah. Someone was asking if you have any more tutorials. Yes. Karen does all of the Yasutomo YouTube channel tutorials, and she also has her own really amazing channel, um, Art and Craft with Karen Elaine. So be sure to check that out. She, If you like this, then you'll love her channel. You'll just get endless videos there. Yeah. Come on, come on over and subscribe. Come on Leave over friendly subscribe. comments. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, and then we also have some people asking where to buy this paper. So you should definitely check with your favorite local art supply store. Um, we we love for everyone to support their local businesses, but um, we know that it's not going to be in everybody's local stores. So you can buy it online. It is on Amazon, um, and it is going to be up shortly on the Yasutomo e-commerce store. So um, maybe even later this afternoon, it'll be up there. So there are various places to find it. Um, but yeah, just to let you all know, because I know that question came up a few times. And I think that's it. So give me just a minute. We have a lot of entries. So I'm just gathering all the little name slips to put them in. We do into a drum me. roll. We can do a drum roll. <laughs> it's, it's a lot. I'm oh, going to... Yeah, it, it's definitely a lot. I think we got a lot of viewers this time because especially the alcohol inks were a big draw. And um, like I said, I think we have some alcohol ink artists and educators here. So we have a oh, lot exciting. of office cleaning. I'm going to put myself on mute. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Maybe Karen can continue. <laughs> Do you want to hear the vacuum? Is that kind of, I guess, they, they it's so nice to have an office cleaning though, isn't it? But yeah, so really, if you have love alcohol inks, and whatever brands, there's a lot of brands. Ranger makes the great ones. There's, uh, I think, uh, Jacquard makes some. I think Pinatas, right? If that's the name. Um, well, who else? There's and there's stuff coming out of everywhere, and it's a beautiful medium. Um, but if you are want to just experiment, just mix media. Use your 91% alcohol and watercolors. Play with those, and then you might want to go buy yourself some colors. Suggestion would be. Stick with one color family, you know, like when you're first doing it. Because what happened with my little blue one that I had? 
it got muddy because I mixed um, some, I just mixed a weird, maybe black with some other color and it just didn't, I just didn't like it that much. So I think that the brilliance of these colors really shine when you work with similar colors, like keep all your blues together, keep all of your reds and yellows together and keep them from mixing too much together. But it's fun. These are just, it just opens up a whole new world of lots of fun and mineral paper is the perfect substrate for that. And by all means, keep working with your, whatever you've got, but mineral paper is something to have in your stash. <laughs> Absolutely. In your art all supplies. Right, everyone. So you're good? Oh, sorry. Um, you know, I think we're just gonna kind of power through it a little bit. Okay. So I'm gonna, um, because I feel like this is a part of the giveaway. I have my little scramble of names that always gets cut off in the, in the virtual background. Um, so we'll go ahead and pick a name at random. And it is, we have Neela C in Santa Fe, New Mexico. So Neela, if you're there, just drop a comment to let us know and um, you can claim your prize and I'll follow up with you. I'm gonna go back on mute though. Well, congratulations. So I'm, I'm and for everybody that attended, um, I hope you enjoyed, got some inspiration from this and you could mix media is like, I love the word because, you know, you just try to mix everything up and, you, and play, I encourage you to play. That is the most important thing. You can get so much, just like right now, I'm not thinking, I'm just playing. And what will happen is sometimes magic happens and sometimes it doesn't and it's okay. Just enjoy the experience. And that's the magic really is the experience of creating and whatever happens, you know, you may get something you'll love and you may get something that not as much, but somebody else might. So we can always be our toughest judges when it comes to creating. Those are, are we winding up there, Phoebe? Should we say we're uh, winding up? Yes. And, you know, usually we um have the, the winner comment, um, just let us know that they're still there. But um, I haven't seen Mila write her name or write a comment back to say that she's Was that, How's so. that spelled? How's her last name spelled? Um, well, we just have a last initial. We just asked for a first full name, last name initial. So Neela oh, is Neela. Neela. L A. Hopefully I'm pronouncing it right. I, hope I, it's, I think it's somebody I might know. So I, can, I could try to reach out. If she doesn't reach out, maybe we can send her, I can send her a message. I think I might know who she is. I think I know Oh, her. okay. I don't yeah, know, I know that maybe she was there, but yeah. Yeah, we, we might've gone a little bit over the time, but you know, I think that um, I am open to also selecting a second winner just because Ooh, we had- What are we giving away, today. by the way? Yes. Oh, we're going to give away one of the new mineral paper pads that okay. you've been demonstrating. I think a lot of people are really eager to try the mineral paper. And we definitely want to get it out into more hands so that more people can know about it. Um, and then we'll also send one of the watercolor pencils um, sets that you sent out earlier to, or that you uh, demonstrated at the yeah. very beginning of the video. Yeah, cool. Um, also the gouache and one of the watercolor tins um there's one on the screen right now but we'll send a little mini one because everything else oh kind of fun the mixing color one. On yes one. perfect yay yeah all right nice. so i'm just gonna pick one more name and if this next person who i call is here go ahead and comment that you're with us i have jackie w from louisiana if you're there jackie from louisiana drop a comment to let us know that you're there and i will follow up with you how exciting. Congratulations. Two winners, even better. <laughs> we might just, um, yeah, we might just, I might just follow up with our winners afterward. And then what um, you could do is if you find, um, if they, you know, if they don't respond, there's always, you can always con contact the other attendees, I guess, right? Absolutely. Okay, oh, cool. Jackie's here. All right, Jackie. Congratulations, congratulations. Jackie. All right. Well, thank you everybody for joining us. Um, we're so happy to be able to share these kinds of videos with you. Um, feel free to let us know if there's anything else that you're interested in that you'd like for us to show in a future video. Um, otherwise, we'll just continue doing our best to bring you stuff like this that we think you'll be excited about. Um, all right, and have a good weekend, everybody. Thank you for Have a great us. weekend. I'll see you. I'm gonna Take keep care. painting, so. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.